Talk and another very exciting evening's viewing on BEM TV. We're doing some more video reviews, well, a video review tonight, and the film we've chosen is another John Waters film because he's fabulous. And this film is called Desperate Living. And I can't do it. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to our panellists. We have three fabulous panellists tonight. From Inside to Outside, Matt, welcome back. Thank you, Sarah. And John. Hello. How are you? That purple shirt's getting a lot of wear, isn't it? Yes. And, and also Chris. Okay. He's getting fan mail left, right and centre, is our Chris. Oh, yes. You didn't realise that, did you? No. Oh, good. Let's have a look at the first clip from this movie. This is Desperate Living, John Waters, and we'll be back in a moment to talk about it. You have to get it out, it's weird. Accidentally killed my husband. I don't care what you did. Nobody's in Yorkville for a vacation. We all did something or we wouldn't be here in the first place. Get up, sir. I'm really not that hungry. I invited you to dinner and you accepted. Now you'll eat this if I have to jam it down your throat. Murphy, I called you to dinner. Do I have to come in there and Smack you. Oh. What a sick mind you've got, John. <laughs> yes, they, I believe they're eating a cat or a rat. A cat. Oh, I say, it just sounds wonderful. Well, they're, they they're connoisseurs, food. aren't they? <laughs> Let's talk about this film. Look, it's either a cat or a rat. Right, a cat and or a rat and then a whole person. Oh, why not? <laughs> I have to confess, oh, I haven't actually good. seen this movie. Oh. So I'm looking forward to watching this one. And we're completely dependent on the opinions of our panellists. <laughs> Who wants to start? Let's do a synopsis first. What's this film about? Well, it's about a housebound woman with a mental disorder. She's, abs she's got absolute paranoia. <laughs> very new, very neurotic. And she goes around with a leg um, clamp and a stick and she's walking around, you know, when the kids accidentally knock a baseball through the window. Don't you try! And, you know, it's all, it's all this Don't we love the way John breaks into the scenes from the movie? And the, and the, um, the maid is like a, um, she's an alcoholic and she's, um, she, um, Don't touch your mic, they're going crook at you. And she's, um, she's an alcoholic and <laughs> she steals all the, um, she basically raids the cupboard and she kills the husband by sitting on him and, um... Also, she's neurotic and she's actually played by Mink Stoll, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And now, I believe, Matt, this was your first, the first film that you'd seen? No, you saw another John Waters film earlier. So... Guys first, then Desperate Living, so... Yeah. And this film is, uh, this is actually your personal copy yeah. given to you by a friend. Yep. You are a sick bunny, you are, oh, having a John no, Waters film on wonderful. your shelf. It is. It's fantastic. Why do you like it, though? That's the thing. What is uh, it about John Waters that we his, like so much? It's his style it's original it's um he uh i don't know it's it's that black side that right we've all got within us that um i mean can i mention drugs because no you can't no, 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 I can't. In this show. we don't want our rating to go up <laughs> Okay, look, of okay. course, um, it, it is in fact in described by Village Voice as a triumphant example of the most vital bad taste in America. And John Waters is an openly gay filmmaker, director. Okay, so Chris, I'm interested. Did you, do you sense any kind of gay sensitivity in there? Well, yes. <laughs> the um, clip there. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, it, the whole, you can tell, every, all the cast are gay, even in the first opening scenes with husband and wife, husband and wife you, you know, lesbian and homosexual. Man, it's definitely, a, and then it, by the end of the movie, it's full of celebration, celebra oh, celebration right. of being gay and killing the queen so you can rule in, live in freedom. Because right. I know there's a whole lot of leather men at one point. Oh, yeah. That's oh. the queen's army, yeah, is a whole gang of leather men. And they have sex with her. 
Oh, Lord. Oh, do they? <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. sounds like somebody I know. And the thing is, of course, we, as the th next clip we're going to look at is, in fact, I think it involves the Queen. Is that this one coming up or the last one? Yeah. No, so, okay. Carlotta. Queen, Car Queen Carlotta. Carlotta. And who's she played by? She's a fascinating Edith actor. Edith Massey. She's a weird looking person, isn't she? <laughs> uh, well, she's unique. This is um, one she's thing unique. I like about um, John Waters is he um, uses. Uh, several actors over and over again and it's the way he uses them and um, his actors I don't subscribe to that beauty myth type thing no, except for Ricky oh, Lake well definitely <laughs> not no <laughs> right uh, we're over, well over to you let's have a look at this clip sorry yeah. mate just interrupt you sure. this is another clip from Desperate Living and this is we see the Queen herself here roll the tape Tony <laughs> I'll call you when I need you, Lieutenant Wilson. I honor you, Your Majesty. Cuckoo, I must have a little talk with you. Oh, leave me alone, Mommy. I've had a wonderful evening. I don't want it spoiled with your nosy nagging. A wonderful evening with a garbage man? Not a garbage man. He just helps pick up trash at the nudist colony. I hardly think that a nudist janitor is a proper escort for a royal princess. I'm 38 years old and I can date who I please. You have no right to order me around like one of your subjects. You may not realize it, Cuckoo, but you have an awesome responsibility on your shoulders. One day, all Northville will be yours, and you must learn to rule with dignity. And I want to be queen of anywhere. Father, I want right, to marry. Stand by. Oh, we're trying to work out what mics are on. It's all very exciting here at Ben TV. Well, that's it. Television on the edge, which is why we're having a look at these John Waters films, really. Okay, we saw the queen there. Oedipus complex going well. She's isn't. modelled on Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> um, she is, because Queen Elizabeth was red hair. <laughs> Wasn't she? Um, you could say that, but I can't really think of it. Big fat ogre with, oh. with teeth coming out <laughs> with her 40 year old unmarried daughter. <laughs> well, yeah, well, 40, 38 year old <laughs> unmarried daughter. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Did we saw the Queen. That was obviously some, but that was one of your. Who, who chose that scene? I can't remember. Matt. Matt. Is that your favourite scene in this movie? Um, no, I, I like uh, Griselda, the, <laughs> the way she kills the uh, Okay, husband. who's... Griselda is who? Um, the maid. Right. And also Peaky Gravel's um, confidant. Uh, okay. Future lover. The only yeah. one she feels she can... Are so they lovers? Trust. Oh yes, oh yes. Later on oh. in the movie, <laughs> as they scene. get to Northville, <laughs> yes. Um, they, they become lovers, lovers yeah. right. Um, I think we're, uh, we know exactly what level we're on with this movie, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Okay, so, so far we've had them eating a rat and a cat and we've had a, oh, a saucy little relationship the at the end. Until they get to Mortville like that. Well, I'm yeah. so <laughs> pleased about that, <laughs> you know. Chris, what was your favourite scene in this film, Desperate Living? Um, I have to agree with Matt, the, where the, the maid kills the, the husband by suffocating him with her bum. bum. She sits on him. She and sits yeah, and she sits on him. Yeah. So yeah. Get up down on that. So, um, yeah. And I think maybe also when... I once um, saw a scene like that in a bar, in a bar <laughs> somewhere. Oh, no, hang on. No, transparently, that's from another line. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It's crazy, this movie. And, um, yeah, also when I think there's two other characters that... Um, Mrs. Gro Grovel, or Gravel, Gravel yeah. and the way to hook up with, and they're two lesbians, and one's rather butch, and she gets a sex change. And oh! oh. Yes, lovely. And sex change from girl to boy? Yeah. From girl to yeah. boy, okay. as man, and she thought that's what her partner wanted. And her partner declares, no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted exactly the way you were. Mm. So she then snips it off <laughs> oh. in full view of that. So I think this is very fascinating. So because obviously what John Waters has done here is he's touched upon some really sort of sensitive issues like transgender and the like. So how does he handle it? He's obviously taking a parody approach. Were you offended by it at all no. as viewers? No. Maybe but I, I mean, part, part, apart from the fact that you kind of are titillated by the sickness of it, yeah. did you have <laughs> it, did it? Did it kind of dog at your conscience at all? No, just no, it was very, it was very, po it was very politi it, I thought 
it was political. I'd be interested mm. to know how early in the 70s it was made because it was like saying all murderers, killers, and everybody who do does anything, if they do anything wrong, they're in the same category as homosexuals and lesbians and they all have to live in one big town away from normal people and they have to yeah. eat cats and rats. And right, but that's actually really fascinating. I wish we could talk about that because actually the the um, existentialist writer Jean Genet espoused this whole theory about how um, you know homosexuals and criminals were all the same and he was fetished by criminal activity. Sorry, Matt, you were going to say something? Well, I was going to say in the end, it all worked like it didn't work. I mean, that putting all the um, um, murderers and rapists and all that didn't work because it turned against Queen Carlotta and, right, and all that. I mean... So the message was still that didn't make any difference? No. They, like, weren't, they weren't good at what they were doing, well, murdering they, well, and raping. they had a republic. <laughs> they tried to control it for a certain time, but right. it backfired. So. Okay. But also the main point why they were there was because they were... The main reason initially was they were outcastic, they were criminals, either for murder or something else, and then it became because they're gay. So that kind of had that overhang of criminal in it. But, um, mm. I don't think it was a direct thing. Being gay, I think We've run out of time. Oh, oh, we hardly get any time to discourse at all, do we? The film is called Desperate Living. It is a John Waters film, and you can get this from your all good video stores. And if they haven't got these kind of movies, you should be saying to them, get them in because they're great films. Actually, they're real hard to get. Are they? Yes. Maybe they're in the alternative section. I do need to move on because we're wrapping up. Yeah. <laughs> love your opinion, love your work. <laughs> Actually, this is um, the. We're ending with a clip from another film. The film is called The Living End, mm. and it's. An <laughs> I just swallowed some hair. It's another alternative style film from a filmmaker called Greg Araki. He's American as well. The Living End. Thank you for watching and have a look and see what you think of this. They're all weird. They're all weird. Hey, what is this stuff? What? Oh, just a bunch of shit I'm using for this article I'm writing on. The death of cinema. What, you like uh, review movies or something? Yeah, when all those fails. You know what they say, those who can't do, teach. And those who can't teach get paid 25 cents a word to rip other people's work to shreds. Mm. Yeah. Are you a fish freak too? Oh, it's my exes actually. Um, I just wound up with custody. So what's his name? Heard of fish or my ex? Both. Craig. Both.